to our fourth week in Advent, and we get all the way up to uh, getting ready for Jesus to be born. Um, we come all the way up to uh, Joseph hearing the news today that the woman he's engaged to is going to have a baby, and um, that's kind of a big surprise to him. And so there's a lot to keep track of and make sense of in that story. So what I want to do today is I want to try to take you to Mary and Joseph, and I, I want to ask you to think of them maybe in a way you haven't before. I want you to think of them as normal people like you and I, and in the midst of life, things, have gotten cr- things are kind of crazy, and they're asked to trust that God's got it, right? And, you know, every year we come to this time of year, and the holidays are a hard time for many reasons, and we've got a lot of things going on in our lives, and there's things that we're worried about and concerned about, and this time of year is when grief really pops its head for a lot of us, and there's so many things we're sorting through, and we're reminded, um, it's right in front of us, that, man, life is crazy and tough and hard, and then we hear this nice little Christmas story about a sweet baby, and we're supposed to go, oh, that's great. I want to connect the dots today, because in the Bible, people of faith do not have just a great, lovely life that goes awesome all the time. And actually what we find out, even in Mary and Joseph, is that to trust God means really trusting through some hard, hard stuff. And that might be everyone around you judging you. That might be everything in your life just seeming to go haywire. But it's tough. And in the midst of that comes this promise that God is with us. And so we're going to grab onto that today and try to make sense out of what this looks like. Now, another piece I want to give you for context this morning is the context of Matthew's gospel. So uh, to understand kind of the timeline, right, we, we're pretty sure Jesus was born right around the year zero, right? And uh, Jesus died at about the age of 30, 30, 33, somewhere in there. Matthew's gospel was written sometime around the year 80, So almost 50 years after Jesus was crucified, okay? Matthew's gospel was written. And between Jesus' crucifixion and Matthew writing his gospel, um, things get really bad uh, for the Jewish folks and for the people who follow Jesus. And so the Romans end up coming into Jerusalem in 75 AD, and they destroy the temple, um, and uh, uh, they, they basically just rip the heart out of the people. Along with that, the Christians that Matthew is writing to are people who grew up with Jewish roots, Jewish tradition, Jewish family, but they've come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, and not all of their friends and relatives agree with them on that. And so in many places, the Christians are now not very welcome in the synagogue, and so they're, they're struggling with a sense of community, they're struggling with a sense of place. What I want you to hear here is Matthew's writing his gospel to a community that, is, that has a lot of reason to doubt, a community that's going through a lot of hard stuff and is going, okay, um, we believe in Jesus, but where is God in all of this? And Matthew writes this gospel and has the audacity to proclaim that God is with us, even in the midst of all of this. So here we go on um, the beginning of Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Let's see how this is set up this morning. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His his mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. Let's pause there for a moment. Now, we need to understand some some other things about this culture. So, 2,000 years ago, in this culture, um, women didn't have much of a say in anything, right? And uh, marriage usually was not because two people fell in love. Marriage was um, an arrangement that um, two males made about what what was in the best interest of their families, okay? It was an economic arrangement. Now, that doesn't mean that people didn't fall in love. It doesn't mean that couples didn't have, uh, have that. But certainly, marriages, by and large, were arrangements that were made. Also understand that the purpose of that arrangement for, um, for the man's family is to secure an heir where things will be passed down. And so it matters that the son that is born is part of the family. You see where this is going, okay? 
It's a big deal. Now also understand that when an engagement is made in this setting, that's like a binding contract. They're, even though they haven't had the ceremony yet, they're seen by everyone as already being married. So Mary's still with her family. Joseph's with his. He's probably preparing a place for them to move into together. But this deal has been struck. They have agreed they're going to be married together. And then comes this really hard-to-believe news, right? Now let's also remember um, what happened prior to, uh, to Joseph uh, finding this out. Do we remember what happened with Mary? Right? We read in Luke's gospel that, that Mary was visited by an angel and said, hey, this is what's happening here. Um, you're going to have a child um, from the Holy Spirit, and that child will be the Savior of the world. And Mary responded this way. She said, let it be with me as you, as you have said. I am a servant of the Lord. And Mary basically says, okay, God, but understand her context. A woman who's engaged, who has no power or, uh, or um, way in the world in this culture, um, who's been promised to a, he's, she's been promised to a man, is now being told by God, you're going to have a baby. That's uh, going to come from God, not from your soon-to-be husband. And so um, that's what we're going to do here. And so understand that in Mary's world, she's got a big problem on her hands, a really big problem, okay? But her response is, I'm going to trust you, God, with this. So now we come back to Joseph, and we hear, what we hear in verse 19 was, Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man, did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. So in this world, Joseph really has two options. One, let everybody know what's going on here, and Mary's in big trouble. Or two, just kind of quietly say, you know, we're just going to go our separate ways here. Good luck. Okay? We read that he is a righteous man. He does not want to cause a scene for her, and so he just decides we're just going to kind of go our separate ways. So just as he's deciding that and he's coming to that decision, we continue with the reading. Something happens. A third option comes to him. Verse 20, it says, As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, and the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God is with us. So the angel comes to Joseph. Gives, uh, you know, he, this, is, this is obviously not going to go well. The angel comes up to say, hey, Joseph, listen, this is okay. I need you to trust me. Trust God here that this is okay. This, this baby, this is what's supposed to happen here. And you're going to take her as your wife and you're going to name that baby Jesus and he will be the savior of his people. He will save them from their sins. And then Matthew gives us this quote from the Old Testament and he says, listen, this baby that's coming we will call Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So here's the situation for Mary and Joseph that I want you to grasp. In both of them choosing to... to to stick together and move forward in this situation. They are choosing a life that now, for them in their culture, both of them will now forever carry a scarlet letter. Okay, understand that. Everybody's talking about Mary. Everybody's talking about Joseph. And from this day forward, everybody's going to know and they're going to look at them differently. Okay? And they're saying, okay, God, we're going to do it. They are accepting a life in front of them that is going to be difficult. Let alone for Mary, what will it mean? She will watch her son die on a cross. I mean, it's, it's one of the most horrendous things we can imagine to lose a child. But then to, to watch them um, tortured in the way that Jesus was, that's unimaginable, I think. So I want you to understand that Mary and Joseph are saying yes to God in the context of a situation that means a lot of hardship, it means a lot of broken relationships. They are choosing to trust God through something that's going to be really actually kind of ugly. They're saying, okay, God, I know you're with me. And so we hear Matthew tell us the prophecy, his name is Emmanuel, God with us. 
And so this is the promise today that I want to ask you to grab onto. This is the promise today that I want to ask you to hold, hold. God is with us. Now here's the interesting thing about Matthew's gospel. So here we are in the first chapter, and we hear this reminder that God is with us. Now fast forward all the way to the end of Matthew's gospel, 28 chapters later, after Jesus' crucifixion, and the last thing that Jesus says to his disciples, and remember this, I am with you always. So we hear Emmanuel, God is with us, and we hear Jesus say, I am with you always to the end of the age. So Matthew bookends his gospel with this promise of God that is being fulfilled. And ultimately, Jesus then hands off to his disciples his mission to carry forward, to love and bless the world, to share this good news. But the journey that they take is a difficult and dark one, and actually, as we know, the disciples too. At the end of this, when the disciples accept their mission from Jesus, and he says, remember, I'm with you, they also are choosing to die. Do you know that every single one of those disciples will be martyred for their faith? That is, they will have the choice to renounce their faith or die, and they choose to die. Now, some of you in this room may, may be in that category of agnostic or a skeptic, and I just want you to consider this for a minute. These disciples, they got nothing out of this. They weren't receiving paychecks, right? They, there was no pension plan. They, they weren't getting anything for it. And every single one of them from that day forward finds themselves constantly being challenged, constantly facing hardship, and they stick to their story to death. Yes, I was with Jesus, and yes, I witnessed his miracles, and yes, I believe he is the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of God. Pretty remarkable, I think. But ultimately today, this is about God's promise to all of us. And just as Mary and Joseph faced a road in front of them that was uncertain, but certainly it was filled with hardship, they said, okay, God, we're going to trust you with this. That's the journey that we face each and every day. Oftentimes in our lives, we find our places where the road doesn't look good in front of us. And we are challenged with our response. And we hear the promise, God is with you. And Jesus says, I'm with you always. This is what we hold on to in the ups and downs of this life. This is what we hold on to when the future is uncertain. We hear God's promise that God is with us. Friends, I want you to hear today that the life of faith is it, nowhere in Scripture does it say, hey, if you believe in God, it's going to be great. It's not there. Now, the promise in Scripture is that when you face life like we all do, God will be with you. Always. And so, my friends, as we come to Christmas, and as we find ourselves facing all the things that we're facing right now, I want you to hear that God is with you. God is with you always. And Jesus says, I'm with you even to the end of the age. God is with us. So we celebrate, my friends, that God has come to this earth. He's given his life for us, and he invites us now to live out this mission knowing that he is with us always. Let's pray. Mighty God, today we're grateful for the witness of Mary and Joseph, two unassuming people who, facing a difficult journey, said yes to you. They trusted you, they believed you, and you came through. And Jesus, as you left this earth, you said to your disciples that you would be with them. They trusted you, they believed you, and you, you came through. And so God, today we're looking to you. We're facing uncertain futures. We have many questions. But we hear you asking us to trust you. And so today, Lord, we say we believe you. You will come through. So help us to see each day, God, that you are with us. To know that you are with us always. And for that, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, my friends, in each of our worship services, um, we practice one of the sacraments, either communion or baptism. That's